Good day, friend of God. Welcome to prayer on Thursday, the 16th of May. Let's begin with an open, restful heart and a loving mind as we turn toward the Lord. Lord, open our lips together and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us together. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Son of Righteousness has risen. O come, let us worship Christ our Passover. Alleluia. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia! Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia! Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. As we continue our journey toward Pentecost and the gift of the Spirit, we are pointed to Zechariah chapter 4, verses 1 to 14 today for our Old Testament reading. This is a mystical visionary experience. As you listen, what jumps out for you? And the angel who was speaking with me returned and woke me up like a man who is roused from his sleep. And the angel said to me, What do you see? And I responded, I see a completely gold lampstand and a bowl at its top with seven lights on it and seven pipes on it for each lamp in order to light them. And there are two olive trees next to it, one on the right of the bowl and one on the left. So I answered and asked the angel speaking with me, What are these, my lord? Then the angel speaking with me responded, Do you really not know what these are? And I said, No, my lord. And the angel said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you will be made level ground, and he will bring out the top stone amidst shouting of grace, grace to the stone. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have established the foundation of this house, and they will even complete it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to all of you. For who has despised the day of small things? These seven will rejoice and see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. These are the eyes of the Lord which survey to and fro throughout the earth. Then I answered and I asked, What are these two olive trees on the right and left of the lampstand? And I asked a second time, What are these two branches of the olive trees that are next to the two golden pipes from which they pour out the gold oil? And he asked me, do you not know what these are? I responded, No, my Lord. He answered, These are the two anointed ones who stand by the Lord of all the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Admittedly, this is a bit of a confusing passage. It concerns a mystical vision, like much of the book of Revelation, so it requires some discernment and interpretation. It's important to know that Zerubbabel was given the responsibility of rebuilding the temple in Jerusalem. The prophets Haggai and Zechariah 
were to give spiritual and moral guidance to the work, but Zerubbabel was given the task of carrying out the work and supervising it. Perhaps this oil is a sign of the light of God's presence, God's provision for the light by making the oil available, but also a prophetic encouragement that Zerubbabel would only complete the work, as the Bible says, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts reminding us that it's true God has given us many gifts to accomplish godly work in the world. Ultimately, we will succeed only by the Spirit's presence and power. We may also wonder with Zechariah who these two olive trees are next to the lamp. And here's what the uh, Life Application Bible has for us. The two anointed ones may be Joshua and Zerubbabel, dedicated for the special task of rebuilding the temple. Also note that in Revelation 11.3, two witnesses arise to prophesy to the nations during the time of tribulation. These witnesses will be killed but rise again, end quote. Again, just noting up the resonance points with the book of Revelation as well. Now, Ephesians chapter 4 verses 17 to 32. As we had the lampstand burning with the light of God, we are encouraged by Paul here to live as children of light. So I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity with a continual lust for more. You, however, did not come to know Christ that way. Surely you heard of him and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught, with regard to your former way of life, to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry, and do not give the devil a foothold. He who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with his own hands, that he may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I like this note from the Life Application Bible on this. Although we have a new nature, we don't automatically think all good thoughts and express all right attitudes when we become new people in Christ. But if we keep listening to God, we will be changing all the time. As you look back over the last year, do you see a process of change for the better in your thoughts, attitudes, and actions? Although change may be slow, it comes as you trust God to change you. End quote. Friends, I do think it is good to sit and ponder for a moment our lives and consider over the past year if there have been any signs of change within us. I bet there are if you look. For me, I feel like I'm changing and deepening my sense of appreciation of the gift of creation that Creator has given to us as stewards. And I feel like I'm being called to more vocal response to issues of social justice. 
not only a vocal response, but also some action of some kind. Small steps, but hopeful, ongoing transformation. How about you? Do you see signs of the Spirit at work? I believe there are. Just sit and look deeply. Ask the Spirit to bring things to mind. But take a moment's quiet. No doubt the areas of change in your life will be different than mine, unique to yourself. So you could turn off or pause the recording for now and and have a quiet moment, and then we'll continue with our intercessions. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear and have mercy. For peace from on high, and for our ongoing transformation, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, hear and have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the prisoners in Gaza, for the people of Gaza, for the terrified people of Israel, the terrified people of Ukraine, Syria, and other war-torn places, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear and have mercy. For our bishops, Andrew, Kevin, and Rosilla, for all clergy, for Esther, Lorraine, Father Ajit, Stephen, for our wardens, Ben and Claudette, and deputy wardens, Connellyn and Andrew, for all our St. Philip's angels who labor in ministry, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, hear and have mercy. For Charles the King, for the leaders of the nations, for Justin Trudeau, for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, hear and have mercy for the city of Markham, for the communities in which all our fellow prayer warriors live, for every city and community, and for those who live in them by faith, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, hear and have mercy. For good weather and for abundant harvest for all to share, for an easing of the pressures of environmental change, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear and have mercy. For all who travel by land, water, or air, for the sick and the suffering, especially we pray for healing for Keith, Wendy, Karen, Joe, Gabe, Ricardo, Diane, Rose, Brian for all prisoners and captives, for their safety, health, and salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear and have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, strife, pandemic, and need. For those who are struggling on the margins of society, for those whose living is precarious, and those who are facing eviction, for Fred, For Rita, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear and have mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear and have mercy. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together, you will hear their requests. Fulfill now our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come eternal life. For you, Father, are good and loving, and we glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Now, friends, the blessing of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sanctifier enfold you this day and forevermore. Amen, amen. Have a blessed day today, Thursday.